Hello everyone and welcome to this third episode of the built-ins.random starpass series where we implement together a new Nix built-in function and use that as an excuse to dive into the internals of the Nix card base. This episode is coming later than expected because I screwed up the recording the first time so apologies about that and I hope you're gonna enjoy it even more. In the previous episode we've implemented a first version of the built-in which was working but very inefficient and then we've improved it in the specific case where we have a direct access to the store meaning single user nix without the daemon and without any remote store whatsoever today i'm gonna pair with mark karpov and we're gonna see how we can leverage this local optimization to make things fast not just locally but over the network being the local network when just using the nix daemon or any network uh, when using a remote store over ssh and for that, we're going to have to dive into the most gory details of the remote store protocol so that we can extend it to support this new use case. We're also going to look at how we can test it and we're going to suffer from the heaviness and the lack of documentation of the process. But eventually we're going to succeed. And without further ado, let's get started. So hey Mark. Um, so today uh, we're gonna keep working on our built-ins random store path implementation. Uh, as a quick reminder from the previous sessions, so the first thing we did was to uh, actually implement that built-in. So first uh, register it in the interpreter and give it a quick and dirty implementation, which was working, was correct, was just uh, insanely slow. And then uh, in the second episode, we've tried to make this faster, uh, but by restricting it to the special case where we have a direct write access to the Nix store. Uh, by direct, I mean a single user mode, no daemon, no SSH store or whatever. Because uh, in that case, we can just uh, look, uh, introspect the Nix uh, SQLite database in which everything is stored and just use that to get the data more quickly. And we've uh, very briefly looked at uh, how we could extend that uh, using the store API, uh, which is the generic API describing all the different kind of stores that uh, Nix supports. And we saw that we can add a new method to that API, random store path. Um, which so which we've already implemented for the local store uh, but which we're gonna have to implement for other kind of stores and that's what we're gonna do today uh, in particular we're gonna look at the daemon store because that's the probably the most useful one and it's also used by the sshng protocol which will like give us two things in one shot because we're gonna both handle the standard multi-user setup with the daemon and give a possibility to use this built-in over SSH on, over the network more broadly. And so as a quick reminder maybe of how uh, the Nix stores work. So I mean you have the Nix store, the global ID of stuff in which you put store path, uh, but internally uh, Nix so it has this store API uh, interface and there's a lot of different implementations of it. Um, oh, actually we can uh, look at them. Uh, there's a comment which should list most of them. Um, Okay, if it's uh, willing to do that. But essentially, you have one implementation for the case we saw last time, uh, direct access, what's called local store. Uh, and then there's the daemon store, uh, local daemon store, yeah, that one, uh, which talks to the Nix daemon over Unix socket and also assumes that uh, we have a direct read access to the store to make some stuff faster. Then you have two different SSH stores, the SSH store and the legacy SSH store, um, which allows to talk to a remote Nix store uh, over SSH. 
uh, they use a different protocol. The legacy one has a custom protocol, uh, which essentially no one else uses uh, and uh, so it's called legacy but it's probably the one most people are using because it's the one that's hooked to uh, the ssh colon slash slash urls uh, and the ssh store not legacy is like just is well, just is mostly uh, wrapping the daemon protocol over ssh uh, it's the one you you're gonna use if you use the ssh ng colon slash slash urls uh, and so, then yeah sorry yeah can i can i ask questions yeah sure please do um so the for for me nick store is the the thing that is usually under uh, slash nick slash store right and uh, that has uh, all this kind of um, uh, build results and whatnot uh, so that, this is the store we, that we're talking about, and yeah. then all this uh, different kinds of stores is just various ways to access and manipulate this the same conceptual store. Yes, exactly. I, 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 for, for the one that I just talked about, yes, because uh, there's also the binary caches, so both HTTP and S3 and local, which hold the same information but it's designed for being used as a, as a binary cache so the star path are stored a bit differently uh in there uh, although it's the same idea of a collection of star path mm. uh, but yeah all these are different way of ways of accessing the same information uh, so absent in, in that list is the uh, local store uh, because of a bug in the implementation of that command. Mm -hmm. And you also have the dummy store, which as its name indicates is a dummy store, uh, which is the, just used for tests. Uh, whatever you try to do on it is gonna fail, but it's useful to like ensure that you can evaluate some Nix expressions without touching the store or, or this kind of stuff. You probably mm -hmm. don't really want it in practice. Um so yeah as i said for today we we're, we're mostly going to be bothered with the local demon store and the ssh store and uh we can have a look at how they are implemented so as i said uh so this store api uh so there's a store class somewhere here which defines a lot of stuff actually that's a pretty big uh, and unordered api but all the different things that a store might do so you can uh, i don't know you like look at this method method to tell whether a store path is or not in the store you have some uh, slightly higher uh, higher level methods like uh, there should be a build yeah build path which is going to be used uh, so the method that you're going to use when you call Nix build behind the scenes. Uh, and because every store does not implement all these operations, uh, like for example, you can't build something on a binary cache. It's just a, a plain static uh, HTTP thing. Um, there's a nifty method called unsupported, which uh, can be used as the default implementation for all of these uh, just to it's it's just gonna throw a somewhat nice error message uh, we can actually uh, look at it right here uh, if I try to nix evolve uh, built in built in dot random store path uh, yeah that's gonna fail because i'm using the daemon store by default and this daemon store doesn't support the random store path operation which is the one defined here and which by default is defined as unsupported um, mm. and there's zero 
Uh, uh, so pass. this zero is just the hack that we did last time because uh, Nix has a, an optimization where a built-in function with no argument uh, is considered as a constant. And because mm. of that, it's cached. So uh, calling it two times in the same Nix expression will always yield the same result, which is not what we want. Mm. So we've just and added how, a yeah. dummy argument that's not used. And Haskell, you would pass uh, something like unit. Yeah, uh, actually I could like, Nix has null, so I could pass null. Uh, but since Nix is not typed, uh, So, uh, so yeah, what we want today is to make this supported by the daemon store. So looking at the daemon store, uh, uh, dim, uh, not that one. Where is it defined? Oh, it's in daemon CC probably. Uh, oh no, sorry, it's called remote store. There's a a bit. So the daemon store, which is called remote store internally with a comment saying it should be called daemon store. <laughs> and so that's uh, an instance of the store class, as you can see here. Uh, and the way, so it overrides most of the methods and it does that in a very uh, systematic way. Uh, let's look at what one simple method, uh, I don't know, is valid path. Okay, so is valid path has a caching layer, which means that it's going to call is valid patch and cached eventually. And if we look at what this does, uh, so it's going to send a message to the remote side. Uh, so the message is going to start with a word, uh, whoop is valid path which is a constant uh, defined uh, somewhere in the code base, uh, then send the, the actual path that we want to query. Uh, and eventually it's gonna read the result. Uh, and for some reason it's reading it using the read int method and not to read bool probably because there's no read bool. But anyway, so a, a, all the operations in this store are just gonna be send a query to the remote store and get back the result uh, with a bit of boilerplate in particular this process stgr which uh, is used uh, because so the rem the remote store might uh, print stuff to what should be stgr uh, for example the build log if you're trying to build something and this is sent to a special channel on the client and the client is going to receive it and forward it to its own STDA thanks to this function call. So uh, there are basically two components talking this uh, kind of client that is going to send uh, requests uh, and this is what we're going to implement now. And yeah. then there should be something that will be actually executing things on the daemon side. Yes, which is logically called the daemon. Um, the one I was looking at. So this daemon has the other side of the things. It's essentially running an infinite loop, uh, waiting for commands uh, and yeah, getting a command from the other for, from the other side. So this walker op is uh, the type in which uh, wop is valid path, for example, was defined. It's a big enum defining all the different commands that can happen. And mm -hmm. then doing a big switch uh, uh, inside perform op, yeah, over the different uh, comment that can happen, yeah, switch up and so for, for the is valid path example. So it's gonna defer to the underlying store. So the daemon talks to another store. So in general, uh, like in the standard uh, multi-user setup, the daemon has itself a local store. And so it's gonna ask this local store to so do the, the work. So pass that store path uh, because it's sent as a string. 
uh, ask the underlying store whether it's a valid path and send that result to the other side. And this local uh, uh, local store is uh, what we usually have on our, our local Unix installations. Like uh, yeah, that's what you have. Uh, if you have a single uh, single user Unix installation, you directly access this local store. Mm. Can you uh, can I ask uh, a few questions about this daemon? Yeah, sure. Um, is is it like so? You say it's a uh, like a big loop, uh, which reads uh, requests and then handles them, uh, is it, uh, can it handle more than one request in parallel or they kind of uh, get queued and then uh, So process? yes, it can. So what's, what happens is that each client which connects to the daemon, so it's each Nix call that you're going to make locally is going to fork the daemon process. I mean, it's going to call, cause the daemon process to fork uh, mm -hmm. and have a a new instance of the daemon and inside and, of that uh, it's all sequential but uh that's uh like inside of a nix call that's uh inside of the nix executable uh it's done in a way that everything should be sequential anyways but it can handle several clients in parallel yeah and if uh, if one uh, one of these processes does something with the store uh does it acquire a lock and like uh, is there some some kind of i don't know uh, mechanism that prevents uh braces etc uh yeah with the, the the but that's at, at a lower level when you uh everything that has to write on the store uh there's uh some locking mechanism uh in particular um when you want to uh, i mean there's two places where you want some kind of lock uh, the first one is when you build something, because uh, depending on some conditions and all that, you're, at some point you're going to build stuff in place, if only because you're going to copy the build result into the store path. And so for that, there's a locking mechanism, but at the at the lower uh, local store level, uh, so that's not handled by the daemon in itself. And yeah. the other one is for the the, the inverse operation, which is uh, garbage collection or removing store path. And it's the same way the local store has a global log that it can use. Uh, and so the garbage collector will first uh, get hold of this log so that uh, no other client can uh, touch anything in the store uh, during the mm. GC process. Which actually isn't true anyway since a few weeks, uh, I'm saying that. But now the GC process can run concurrently with some builds, so the locking process is a bit more complex. But uh. So yeah, the broad answer is yes, it's not handled by the daemon itself, but there's some locking in place. Mm -hmm. And, and um, uh, I, I, I imagine that uh, stuff that daemon does is not just limited to manipulating store it uh, probably performs uh, builds and whatnot and basically everything that uh, that uh, we invoke from command line saying nix blah blah yes it, uh, it gets us sort of sent to this daemon who actually does the job yeah so i mean uh Actually, so the building and all that, uh, that might change in the future, but currently it's it's just a store method as far as most of the code base uh, is concerned. So you have mm. uh, a, a, a protocol uh, a message type uh, build path. And whenever that's sent, uh, the store is just going to, the daemon is just going to ask the underlying store to build this path. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, so yeah, so that demon is the other side that we're going to have to, to change. Um, so the first thing in general, when we want to implement a new uh, functionality for the daemon store is to look at the existing um, protocol, sorry, uh, the existing uh, protocol messages, uh, there's a bunch of them, and see whether we can 
just reuse one because uh, once you've added a new message type you're stuck with it forever for backwards compatibility uh, in practice so we're not gonna look too quickly at that uh, you can just trust me that uh, the only one I think that could be used for that is uh, I don't know where it is but there's a message type for listing uh, all the path in the store uh, okay never mind I don't see where it is but that's actually what the uh, simple stupid implementation is using and it works but it's very slow because if you have to dump the store uh, serialize all the store path names and send them over the wire uh, that's way too slow for a for a quick language built in and so we're gonna have to implement uh, our own new uh, protocol message type uh, something like uh, let's follow the implicit convention and add a new message of 47 okay I'm gonna type very slowly because I just got a uh, change my keyboard and I'm gonna need some time to get used to the new one um, so we can just uh, uh, no, why are you complaining? Okay, we can just try and compile that first. It's hopefully it's going to complain because we're not handling that properly everywhere. Um, and while it's compiling, we can look at the demand side of things maybe for. Um, no, let's. Yeah, let's look at the client side first because uh, it's probably going to be simpler. So the first thing we want to do is to uh, so add a new override in the remote store declaration uh, for this query um, query random store path uh, method. Uh, so let's look again at how it was defined. Uh, in store API so it's a virtual store path what did I do yep random store path override uh, need the parents here And just in here, we're gonna actually implement it. Okay, so we can probably mostly, uh, sorry, it's remote store, random store path. Um, so essentially we can do the same thing as uh, is valid path so we first grab the connection and then we're gonna send uh, to the right side of that connection uh, some uh, so a message uh, the, the one we've just defined uh, well, Query random path. Okay, then process STDR, which won't be tremendously useful in our case, probably, but it's a good practice to have it anyways, just in case. And then what we want is to uh, read the star path that is given to us. Uh, so there's a f series of functions which are slightly higher level than this uh, uh, smaller than smaller than or uh, operator to directly 
read some structured data out uh, of the connections, uh, everything under this Walker Proto um, namespace. Uh, meaning that we can just do uh, Walker Proto uh, read. I need to pass in the current store the thing we want to read from and so this phantom parameter which is not very C++ e but allows us to for the type of the thing we want to read from the remote side uh, and we must make it as a proper constructor okay so, so yeah uh, so here this uh, random path function it doesn't need an argument so it, it's it's just the, in the interpreter that it needs this kind of dummy argument yeah it's just uh, at the interpreter level here it's a plain c++ method so mm. um so that should be good uh we can actually just uh try that uh that's gonna fail because we haven't implemented the demon star side of things but uh so there's a totally undocumented way of running uh tests manually uh, but we can enter the test environment and in here uh, we have a nice um, a set of utility functions so that we can start a local daemon. Uh, it should be configured, configured so the nix here should be configured to use uh, the demon that we, I've just run locally using its own Nick store. So I can do whatever I want without risking to screw up my global store. And here, uh, is it, yeah, it's done building. If I try that, uh, oh, it's not gonna work this, <coughs> sorry. Uh, this function is not working properly uh, I'm gonna need to so how is it defined okay we just want to okay essentially what I want is to run this demon thing so I'm just gonna run it manually and now yes and this unexpected so th th that message that first message is from the daemon uh, which is running in the background and that one is probably because the daemon is crashing since it's receiving an unknown message mm -hmm. um meaning that we must implement the daemon side uh so let's get at the bottom of this big switch That's a very big switch uh, here. So, oh, actually the demon is supposed to throw a proper error. I don't know what that, why that's not happening or at least why the error isn't properly shown. But at any rate, let's uh, implement our operation and we're gonna see um so what do we want to do in that case so we don't have anything to read from the client because it's not sending anything all we want to do is also tell it that we're gonna start the work and we need to Q 
get the path from the underlying store so store arrow uh, what was the name of the method already random store path and let's stop the work i'll be honest uh, i skimmed over these start work and stop work methods mostly because i don't remember why they are useful but i'm just gonna trust that they are useful and now we need to send back that result to the client uh, so using essentially the same method that was used to read it but the corresponding uh, write message uh, method worker proto write um, so that one takes the underlying store the right side of the pipe and our resulting path Okay, so now we should be able to <coughs> compile that again. And hopefully that's gonna give us a proper result now that both sides of the protocol have implemented that method. Uh, so we need to stop the daemon so that we can restart it. Uh, yeah. And now, oh, it's nearly working. I just did something very stupid when starting the Nix daemon, which is that I've started using Nix remote equals daemon, meaning that the underlying store that the daemon is gonna try to communicate with is itself, hence the infinite loop. Uh, but if I do that, it's actually not working. Hmm. So either we have a problem in the implementation or uh, the manual thing I've done to try and test things is just broken. Uh, I Okay. So it's nearly working. Uh, the only thing is that in that case, the temporary store that we have is empty and uh, it's hard to get a random path from there. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's just add something. Uh, okay, so now we have something and we can return it and because it's the only path in the store, it's not very useful. But if we add a bunch of extra stuff, yeah, we probably got a different result each time. Um, so uh, there's two things I think that we must do right now. Uh, so one of them is to write some proper tests for that, or at least make sure that it's properly tested. And the other one is that here we can run into uh, very some very nice troubles because uh, um, so as I said we must uh, respect backwards compatibility and if our daemon is too old it's not going to know about this query random path method and so the client will just send an invalid method to the daemon which is going to cause it to uh, so in theory raise a nice error that should be reflected on the client. Uh, in practice, apparently that's just gonna send uh, an end of file and the client is gonna complain about that. But anyways, uh, that's something that we should handle more gracefully. And there's <coughs> a logic for that. Sorry. <coughs> so if we look, uh, here we have a protocol version which is defined and 
so which is just a big bit set uh the first by but the first bits represent the major version uh the last ones represent the minor version uh and the major version has never been increased uh, in practice but it's kept here anyways and so what we want to do is that we want to say that if the remote store is too old um we're not going to use that either we're going to fail or we're going to use a fallback um so first thing means that we're going to bump the protocol version and here we're going to have to so implement this uh check so using the get protocol minor macro So there's a way to get that daemon version is sent as part of the connection handshake. And we must make sure that, so we must fail in case it's uh, strictly smaller than 35. And so let's just fail brutally for the time being. Okay, and, uh, oh yes, we must first grab a handle of the connection, obviously. Okay, so now if you we try to use it with an old version that doesn't support the new protocol, uh, we're just gonna, f we're still gonna fail, but with a nicer error message. And I think we're gonna be able to check that um i'm just gonna try and use my system demon because it's obviously too old to support this new uh, protocol message uh, wait for things to compile that's the wonder of C++. As long as you don't touch the header files, separate compilations mean that it's going to be okay-ish in terms of compile speed. And then once you start touching the header files, everything's going to recompile. Um, and now... Uh, uh, it shouldn't be working. Oh, it's working because I forgot to nix remote equals daemon. And yeah, here it's complaining. The daemon is too old. And that makes me realize that actually our previous test wasn't working properly because I did start the daemon, but I forgot to set nix remote to daemon which means that uh, all the things i was running was directly accessing the store bypassing the daemon so we're gonna have to try that again because maybe it was actually still broken uh, do, does that make sense sorry i'm talking a lot but yeah yeah sorry i i'm just listening and yeah it makes sense okay cool so now if we use the locally built uh, daemon, uh, let's add a bunch of files and if we try to evolve that, okay, it's, it's working properly nonetheless. And we can see that we're actually using the daemon since we get a message from the daemon each time. Mm. Okay. Wonderful. So that's working, uh, as we saw earlier, if the daemon is too old, we get a nice error oh, it's not in my history anymore but we get an error message saying that the demon is too old uh, so that's great uh, let's test it then uh, so we already had some tests for the feature um, yeah, here 
also rather simple test just add some stuff in the store uh, so one first little check that was ensuring that when you run built-ins random star path we get something that seems to be in the store and a slightly more uh, a slightly better one let's say that is gonna run built-ins random star path on the result uh, built-in star path sorry on the result of that which uh, so built-in star path is a function that takes a string and turns that into a star path uh, so, so story takes a string that corresponds to an existing star path and returns the uh, uh, corresponding star path so it's essentially the identity function but it's going to ensure that the thing you give to it is a valid star path which means in that case that this will make sure that the result of built-in's random star path is a valid star path so th this uh, this looks like more integration tests. Uh, it calls all this command line uh, things like Nix instantiate. Yes, yeah, so that's a thing with the Nix test suite. Uh, most of the tests are actually end-to-end -end tests, or let's say, yeah. Uh, there are a few unit tests that are starting to be written, but because of the way the code base is uh is done it's very hard to like it needs some refactoring to get to some uh closer to the code tests let's say so that's something in progress we're not exactly there yet but mm. actually that would probably be uh, a good topic for a whole video just trying to write unit tests for that um so so yeah so this test by default it's going to run in single user mode and that's the thing that was uh working uh, if we get so i can just run that test uh tests built in random stop at sh test uh, so if i make that um compiling a bit of extra stuff because it's always funnier Okay, it's working, it's passing, we're happy. Uh, but it's just passing against uh, the local store. What we want is to make it run using uh, an external daemon, which we can do. So as it turns out, uh, when, you run this, when you run make uh, install check or make some specific test, uh, there's a magic environment variable that will be picked up, which is uh, Nix uh, daemon package, I think. Need to check it up just to make sure. Yeah, Nix daemon package. And if that variable is provided, then uh, when initializing the test suite, Nix will first start a daemon with the Nix executable provided by this Nix daemon package and run everything using this daemon. So in our case, we can do Nix daemon package equals, uh, so we can point it to the locally built Nix and run that same make command. So that should succeed and we're not going to be very advanced because we won't know whether it's really picking up this daemon package or whether I made a typo. But to give us a bit more insurance, we can replace that by my globally installed Nix. Uh, and that should fail uh, for the same reason as it failed before when running Nix daemon for my global environment. It is too old. It is too old. Yeah, and here it is failed and we see the message the daemon is too old. It, so, are there ways to uh, to check that the certain commands should fail? 
Oh yes, yeah, yeah. We we can check that. I mean, it's a it's a it's a bash script, so it's it lacks some niceties, mm -hmm. but we can just use uh, all the bash comments to check that. Um, so uh, we might not want to directly check that. That's going to be a bit tricky. Um, cause, so the way that tests the trends is that when you build Nix, like when you run Nix build on the Nix source tree, it's going to compile everything and run the test suite in local user mode. But then uh, there's going to be an, there's an extra set of checks that are defined uh, in the Nix flake. Uh, these install tests with a bit of indirection, which are going to run the test suite, but uh, with a different Nix daemon or Nix client. And that's how uh, we can test stuff with different versions of the Nix daemon. Um, so this means two things, well, mostly one thing, which is that now, uh, so I won't run it because it's going to take a while to recompile everything. But if we run Nix flake check or if we try to run the Hydra job for Nix right now, it's going to fail because one of the tests is going to run using uh, Nix and stable uh, as the daemon. And so Nix and stable doesn't handle this uh, new uh, remote store method. Mm -hmm. um, so here we, I think we have two possibilities. One of them would be to uh, take again the very slow implementation that we had before, uh, just uh, just to use as a fallback if the demon is too old, uh, just for the sake of demonstration, because that would be just a bunch of copy paste, not very interesting. There's we can also just tell the test that uh, it's not supposed to pass uh, if the demon is too old. Uh, so there's a method, a little function. Re uh, okay, obviously I don't remember it, but all these methods are defined in this big file that's source sourced at the beginning. And there's this yeah require daemon newer than function, which will just gracefully exit in case the daemon is too old, and we can use that here to say that we want we don't want to run that test if the daemon is older than uh, the current nix version uh, so it's not sorry it's not using the, the 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 protocol version it's really using the version of nix mm. And the version of Nix is, oh, sorry, it's, uh, how do I get it? What is it saying? 270. Uh, oh, because I would need to Nix build it, but it's essentially the version of that latest Nix on master, which is um, the, the date. Yeah, it's the date. Uh, the The version starts with the date, so that it's uh, increasing even for an stable version. So today's date, which is zero five twenty five, and that means that now if I say that Nix daemon package is my system one, it's just going to be skipped. Um, okay, well, I think uh, that should be good for today, right? Uh, we have our implementation working over remote stores. Oh, we didn't test SSH. Uh, maybe that's going to be a topic for another one, another session because that might take mm -hmm. a while by itself. And, and it says that it skipped it. it uh, does it analyze this uh, exit code 99? Yes, the exit code 99 has a special meaning for the test runner, mm. which is okay. why it's picked as 99. Um, Magic, magical number. 
magical number. We love magical numbers. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. And see you later. See you. Bye. Bye.